What's up guys? My name is Mike. I am a software engineer, algorithmic forex trader and recently I live in Thailand as an expat. So for those who are new to this channel, if you are interested in algo trading, feel free to subscribe to this channel and join our Discord group to exchange ideas. And now let's move to the main topic of this video, which is me sharing my journey on building the proper software for latency arbitrage algo trading. So let's see when we stopped last time. So in the previous video, I made a big research on creating low latency systems and best practices for them. I found LMAX Disruptor for managing the threats SBE, which is simple binary encoding for low latency serialization. I also tried gRPC, then I made a prototype with this communication, but in the end it didn't really need it, all of this stuff for my use. I decided to ditch serialization and stick only with creating two independent apps, which were .NET MAUI for frontend and gRPC together with LMAX Disruptor for backend. So just without any delays, the idea was to create entire infrastructure for managing the Algos trading systems and broker connections first on the AWS platform, which is Amazon Web Services. I decided to go with them instead of uh, Google Cloud Platform or Azure because of the one simple reason. They offer cross connection to the Equinix server and Equinix servers are basically all the most important trading servers where all the most important trading activity is happening. So it was the deciding factor as it would be nice to have in your infrastructure direct connection, for example, to Chicago Stock Exchange or, or Nasdaq even. So I started with the AWS and uh, after some research, uh, I knew I have to make the project serverless. I really didn't like playing with the Docker containers in the past and the promise of just uploading your code to the GitHub and having everything tested, built, shipped, released automatically was very, I mean, very, very, very promising. And as I was developing mainly in C Sharp and everything is in C Sharp, I wanted to find something good for user interface within .NET family that could be nicely integrated with serverless approaches. And I found that creating a static web assembly application with Blazor and a framework called Lambda Sharp, uh, it's not really a framework, but uh, just a CLI, uh, you know, would be a good approach. So I started developing, I created something like this. And as you can see, hello, Mike Papinski, we are here, we are lo logged in. So for the user authentication for user sessions, I use, of course, the w uh, JWT tokens. So here we have the Cognito user, the, the ID, origin ID, authentication time, username. So all of this data is, is, based, uh, is handled by AWS and the, the Cognito modules, but let's see how it looks like. The home, just for just for let you know, this is the Blazor application. So for home, we got nothing. For adapters, there is no data. Let me try to new adapter. Let's add. Let's just use YouTube uh, name, account, password. Let's use something like this. Four four three. Oh, sorry. Local host can be and here four four three maybe. Cool. BTC USD like this. And we can save. And now, just to be correct, we should see the new meta adapter added. So it means we should see this in our table. But we are not seeing this. Let me just refresh the page. The token is still there, so it should be here. This was the app hosted on AWS. I even bought the domain name called hftbridge.com. But when it comes to priorities, one more time I made the exactly same mistake that I made in the previous videos. The issue was that I focused on building the entire user infrastructure 
instead of building a good trading engine, which should be the main core of the entire project. So the most important building block, which was the trading engine, was not developed. Instead of this, I was doing stuff with AWS and actually managing the configuration and users. So I had some fun playing with the AppSync, which is serverless hosted version of GraphQL API. By the way, I find GraphQL API to be very, very good solution for accessing market data because of the GraphQL streams. So you just add collection, let's say, of ticker symbols, which is then being automatically synced with the current status on, let's say, DynamoDB hosted on AWS. So let's say new quote comes to our infrastructure, then it's being updated via GraphQL and all the clients that are subscribed to the ticker collection will get notified and the collection on the client sites will be refreshed. Simple as that. So thanks for watching guys till this very end. If you like this content, please hit the like button below and subscribe to this channel. 